And my final question was on, you know, we both, and you've already touched on this, um, we, both, uh, we both love the city of Birmingham, mm -hmm. you know, with, with a real passion. You know, I've got a vast amount of civic pride. And, oh, and, totally. Yeah, it's, um, you know, I, I, uh, I see a lot coming from, a lot of possibility from Birmingham for a lot of the reasons that you just spoke about. I think it reminds me of a, um, of actually what American big cities um, like have like you know your kind of Detroit's and your, your Boston's and and that was that the people went there from all these different parts of the world to work and um, it is a new city Birmingham you know in that sense and there's you know the the camaraderie of you know the uh, the old Irish Irish man on the line with the Jamaican fella and uh, the Bangladeshi fella, all working together and, and taking their tea breaks together. It's something that we know are incredibly emotive to us, and that we've had those experiences. That I think only you know the majority of the people where you work could only guess at really knowing that real solidarity you know and and in its ugliness and and in, and in its comedy and its beauty and that's what i see about this this city and um and you know um i i you know i see it on the right and i, I see i see that there's a certain kind of politics that can come from from brummies as well um that is that is actually pretty bloody shrewd as well at times um, yeah, tell me I about mean, I Birmingham. totally agree with you. I think yeah. that you sum it up really well. I think that um, it is all it is all of those things. It is a total melting pot. It is mm. it should be like woke town, shouldn't it? I mm. mean, because um, when I sit in the chamber, sometimes I sit across the uh, aisle from people and I just think you've got absolutely no idea about where I come from, about where I live. And it's not like it's a small place, it's the second bloody biggest city. Yeah. It's three million people in the wider West Midlands area. Mm. Um and I just think you have you would not you would not be able to like people always say Boris Johnson he's got he's got um uh, real appeal to the I mean we would see him for what he was here within seconds. Absolutely. There is a shrewd, well, yeah. the, the use of the word shrewd. Yeah. Well, and, and actually, it has been used against us, this sort of shrewd indifference mm. to a bit of blouse, essentially. Yeah. <laughs> You're a bit blousy. Yeah. You know, on your way, lad. Mm. Uh, that sort of thing. There has been, it is this sort of shrewd. I often think that if the tagline for Birmingham tourism would be like, come if you want. <laughs> <laughs> like, I mean... If you must, <laughs> we'll welcome you. If you want to, if you want to come and see us for the day, there's some quite good things. Um, and it's so it's been used that sort of shrewdness of not wanting to blow smoke up our asses, mm. and also, I think keep it a bit secret. Yeah. I think an element of keep it a bit secret um, that has been used to cast us as sort of like oh we don't care about like Eeyore, yeah. the Eeyore of the country. <laughs> Oh, like we say, sorry, nobody cares about us. Um, and that, I I think, is couldn't be further from the truth. Mm. Um, and I think that a huge amount was made in sort of like the 60s and 70s about brilliant, bold, brave northern women, for example. Like you mm. can all get your Bessie Braddocks up in your head and, yeah, yeah. and you know that there's sort of the firm women in pit communities and stuff. And Birmingham didn't have that same uh, that same sort of exposure, mm. but what what you describe as like you know down the rover the mm. men on the track line being mm. exactly as you describe is mm. entirely true. Yeah, and yeah. growing up with. I sometimes like when I'm with people who aren't from Birmingham, mm. especially uh, people who are from South Asia, and you'll know the names of the food and stuff, and you can speak you can speak in passable Punjabi yeah, about yeah. food, mm. and people are like, "Oh my God, I can't believe you!" Know, I'm, I'm, I'm from yeah. Birmingham. Yeah. Of course, I know mm. what Gulab Jamam is. <laughs> 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 um, but um, yeah, I think. It seems to me at the moment, more so than ever, that it is a place of possibility. Yeah. I feel something different mm. is going on in Birmingham. 
And it will be money, I'm afraid to say. Some of that will be about money and HS2 and mm. uh, and also the fact that London is, because of house prices, it levels off. Mm. It's the economy, stupid. It's levelling off because it got so goddamn ridiculous mm. um, that I can feel things happening in Birmingham as a sort of spillover from London. Um... So I can I can feel that. However, what bothers me about it is that the sense that it isn't anywhere but the city centre, Harborn, Mosley, Kingsley. Yes. Sheldon mm. is the bit everybody drives through in my constituency mm. from the airport to get into town. And if this new era of developing Birmingham doesn't somehow capture the comedy genius mm. of, you know, some bloke or some woman chatting with each other in Sheldon. Mm. People always say you're really funny as a politician and it is nothing more than piss-taking brummy. Yes. The ability to laugh at myself yeah. and not take seriously when people criticise me has yeah. been the great, my greatest <laughs> protective asset yeah. because, as Dad used to say to us, you're only really awful to the people you love. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And that is innately, I think, from being the sort of underdog Midlander. Yeah. Uh, you know, oh, you know, I don't mean it, but I mean, has he ever said anything nice to your face ever? Uh, no, <laughs> no, no, never. When he talks about us behind our backs, you'd think that we were like god gurus, yeah. uh, that we're like little Buddhas to him. Mm. But to our faces, it's like you must never get a bob on yourself. Yeah, um, I think all you know, every elder in our family is exactly. I mean, exactly. The same. When Nan used to make Mum stand up and say, "Turn yeah. around, turn around," and then she turned to me and say, "You can't believe she used to be so." Then we had to have her hospitalised. <laughs> <laughs> she used to say, it's people in the street, that top, it's no friend of yours. <laughs> that blouse, don't wear it again. <laughs> um, but, you know, they were really kind people. And I think that there's something about that element of my culture that I am so proud of, so fiercely proud that when my kids take the piss out of me, yesterday I got home, I said, can you play this game, one player? And Harry just turned to me and said, well, not really. Yet here we are. <laughs> and I just was like, I just gave him a massive cuddle. I was like, I'm so proud of you. It's just total <laughs> piss taking sarcasm because I'm in the face of my obviously stupid question. <laughs> it's just like, yeah, here we are, Mum. And I really, I'm really, really proud of that. And I think it's one of the reasons that of the sort of zeitgeisty question and yeah. the idea is that. Yeah, I've had all the bad things said about me. I've, mm. uh, you know, people already think that I'm stupid because of the way I talk, and people already think that I'm from a place no one would ever want to go to, mm. and that I obviously would want to rush to get away with it, from it. But you know, I'd sooner move to the moon mm. than move out of Birmingham. Lovely. <laughs> <laughs>